Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit more technical analysis on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets, but more specifically, we're going to be discussing a fellow by the name of Brad Sherman. Now, if you've never heard of this guy, he is a Democrat from this American state of California, and he has recently started asking for support to push through a bill that would ban Bitcoin and the rest of the cryptocurrency industry from operating within the United States of America. So guys, we're going to be doing a little bit of TA on Bitcoin here because even though this rather bad news has broken here over this last couple of days, Bitcoin has nevertheless continued pushing up to recent highs of around uh, $6,300. But we're also going to be discussing this news at length, and we're going to be talking about the potential future of regulations in the American market and the rest of the world as it relates to cryptocurrencies. I think this is going to be a very important video where we're going to be discussing a lot of important topics that are going to be very relevant moving on into this next bull market that we're currently forming. So if you guys do enjoy today's video, definitely consider dropping a like, hit that subscribe button, and smash that notification bell, guys. We do videos every single day here on the channel, and I wouldn't want you to miss any of them. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into it. I lied. Before we actually get on into it, I do want to mention one thing, and that is that all of you guys are always making fun of me saying, Jeb, you need to start drinking decaf coffee. Well, for your information, I always drink uh, water in the morning. I don't drink coffee until today. I just started drinking coffee in the morning, and you guys will probably be noticing a difference. Anyway, actually, without much further ado, Bitcoin is currently trading around $6,300 and change, and Bitcoin has rallied quite substantially here. And originally today's video was going to be on potential ways that Bitcoin could crash. Even though I don't think that's what's going to happen, I think it's very important that we understand the potential downside of Bitcoin so that we can then use that knowledge in our technical analysis and our trading and be aware of what is possible, even if it's unlikely. That's going to be for tomorrow's video though, because what I want to discuss in today's video has to do with this Brad Sherman dude. I'm really not a fan of him just based off of what I have seen. Of course, this is the first I'm hearing of him. I don't know about every single one of the representatives in the House of Representatives in America, and I don't live in California, so that's not surprising. But we're going to go ahead and dive right on into this. We're here on Bitcoinist.com. I will leave this in the description. If I forget, type the URL Bitcoinist.com and then this headline into your search bar and you will find it. Ban Bitcoin, urges congressman after realizing it can disempower the United States. And we're going to be listening to a clip from him in a little while. And he's absolutely right. Bitcoin can disempower the United States. And I want to make a disclaimer here at the very beginning of the video. I love the United States of America. I was born and raised in the United States of America. I live in the United States of America. And there is no other country on the planet I would rather live in than the United States of America. Now, that's not an insult to any other country. That's just the way I feel. And I think there are a lot of people that feel that way as well. And there are many people that feel that way about their own country. And that's perfectly fine. But with all of that said, I do have a problem when people come into Congress and start wanting to say things like this, but even though I do love America so much, I'm not exactly opposed to the US dollar being undermined by something like the like Bitcoin. I would actually be okay with that. I'd be actually relatively happy with that because there's plenty of other ways that America can retain its power on the global stage. We still have the largest military on the planet by far, so it's not really that big of a deal if we do lose the ability to manipulate our own currency because it would give more freedom back to the people. And at the end of the day, what I'm personally most interested in is the sovereignty of the American people, not necessarily the sovereignty of the American government. That's the important distinction. I think a lot of us feel that way because it's a very libertarian vibe that you get when you're in the cryptocurrency market. And this right here is exactly the opposite of what we want in cryptocurrency, not only because they want to ban Bitcoin. Of course, we have a vested interest in seeing Bitcoin stay unbanned in America since it's such a large market and many of us live here. It's also moving in the wrong direction politically because this is kind of a, this is anti-libertarian, if you will. This is more of a authoritarian or totalitarian. I'm not going to get into the differences between those two terms, but this is definitely something that uh, is giving more power to the government and that's one of the things that I personally don't want to see happen and I don't think a lot of us do either especially in this case anyway we're gonna go ahead and skip his quote here because we're good we're gonna just watch the video and see his own words right in here in just a second and Anthony Pompolino noted that Congressman Sherman has been in office for, for over twice as long as Bitcoin has existed. That's another thing in the United States. We have representatives who have been there for longer than half of us have been alive. Maybe we should outlaw lifeline politicians. I would agree with that. Like I said, not getting into politics, but I would agree with that. It is a rare moment in history when the state removes their veil of pretense of, pre of preventing fraud or protecting customers at WRT money production and openly states the true motivation of that conspiracy, exacting wealth control and hegemony from the production monopoly. And pretty much what this is talking about is exactly what we're about to watch. Let's go ahead and watch this video by Brad. Hear his own words. This is going to be a minute and 12 seconds long. If you want to skip through part of it, you can, but I'm going to let the entire thing play so that no one can call, okay, so that no one can say I'm taking him out of context. I look for colleagues to join with me in introducing a bill to uh, outlaw cryptocurrency 
uh, uh, owner uh, purchases by Americans so that we nip this in the bud, in part because not uh, an awful lot of our international power comes from the fact that the dollar is the standard unit of international uh, finance and transactions. Clearing through the New York Fed is critical for major oil, oil and other transactions. And it is the announced purpose of the supporters of cryptocurrency to take that power away from us, to put us in a position where the most significant sanctions we have on Iran, for example, would become uh, irrelevant. So whether it is to disempower our foreign policy, our tax collection uh, enforcement, or our law, traditional law enforcement, the purposes of cryptocurrency, the advantage it has over uh, uh, sovereign currency is solely uh, to aid in the disempowerment of, uh, of uh, the United States and the rule of law. And it's quite funny that he would say that the entire purpose of cryptocurrency is to override the government's power and to take that power away and give it back to the people because he's absolutely right. That's the funny thing about what he just said. Pretty much everything he said is correct. But the thing is, since he's in, since he's in the government, since he's a representative and he's part of the United States government, he sees that as a bad thing. Oftentimes, when you see the government wanting more control, that's not going to be a good thing for the people. Now, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. In this case, I think it's an absolutely terrible thing. I think that him wanting power to stay in the hands of the United States government and pull it back away from the people, as it has always been with the United States government, I think we're moving in the right direction with cryptocurrency, and he wants that to be stopped in its tracks, because he says that the United States will lose a lot of its power. It'll lose its hegemony, to use a word that he didn't use, but that's pretty much what he was saying. I think he's absolutely right in saying what Bitcoin will do. And I think what Bitcoin will do is a very good thing, because guess what? I don't care about the power of the United States government. I care about the sovereignty of the United States people. And I think many of the American people would feel the same way if they knew as much about this topic as many of us do. And one thing I also want to mention is exactly where uh, a lot of uh, Brad's ca uh, campaign contributions are coming from. You can come here and you can walk and you can look at where exactly all the money from different candidates are coming from. And this is really interesting. Here are top. Here are uh, five of his top contributors. One of them being Royal Business Bank. Let's go ahead and read here. Royal Business Bank is a Chinese American bank. Okay, that that sounds a little bit uh, sus. Uh, Capital Group Companies. Let's go ahead and see that. I have this one over here. Amer Capital Group is an American financial services company. Okay, that that makes sense. Uh, Northrop, Northrop Grumman is the one uh, is the uh, is the one different company here. That's a defense company. Allied Wallet. Let's go ahead over to Allied Wallet. Oh, a credit card processing and merchant services provider. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, UBS. AG. Let's see what UBS AG is. Uh, UBS Group AG is a Swiss multinational investment bank and financial services company. So it's not really surprising that our friend Brad Sherman here isn't a fan of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency because he has two biases that the rest of us don't. First of which is he's funded by banks and credit cards. Second of all, he works in the government. And by the way, guys, I don't know about you, but I don't work for the government. I don't really care about the government's power so long as America retains its ability to uh, uh, secure national defense, and that's not being threatened by the by Bitcoin. That's not being threatened in all, at all. And also, I don't work for credit card companies, so I don't really care if those two get screwed over. In fact, I'm kind of happy to see both of them go down because the monopoly that credit card companies have over the uh, uh, credit card companies and payment service providers and financial banks have over the monetary um, uh, sovereignty of the people is definitely kind of a modern day imperialism, definitely a kind of a modern day tyranny, if you ask me. And at the same time, I'm not a big fan of the United States government. So what he's saying here about Bitcoin taking away power from these people and what he didn't say about Bitcoin taking power away from his backers is something that he's definitely right about. And it's something that, unlike him, I'm happy about. So guys, what does all this mean? Essentially what he was saying, I don't think he actually said it in this clip, but what he was saying is, uh, actually did, he said at the beginning, I'm looking for colleagues to join with me introducing to a uh, uh, outlaw cryptocurrency uh, uh, owner uh, purchases by America, by Americans. Pretty much what he's asking for is for colleagues to come and join him to start putting together a bill to outlaw cryptocurrencies so that cryptocurrencies are not able to be traded, in, uh, traded, uh, worked in, it basically just banned Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in the United States of America. Now, I don't want to go ahead and misre misrepresent him, but that's literally what he said. If you guys are interested, I do highly recommend you go and do your own research because I can't get into all of it on exactly what he was getting into. I just don't have time in this video. I'm not trying to misrepresent him. If I said anything wrong, tell me. I don't want to be that one dude in the media who's always or who sometimes misrepresents people, but that is exactly what he said. Introducing a bill to outlaw cryptocurrency. That is specifically what he said, so I don't think I'm misrepresenting him in saying that. 
Guys, I don't think this is going to go through. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. I don't think that he's ever going to get a whole lot of traction for this. I don't think Bitcoin is going to be banned by the United States of America. I don't think that that's going to happen. I don't think that he's going to get a lot of support on this. And one of the major reasons I don't think he's going to get a lot of support on this is because most politicians only care about what the majority of the people care about. And that sounds like a good thing on the surface, but it actually means that smaller niche issues, like, I don't know, fixing the road system or something that isn't a big political issue in the media, the politicians don't care about that because that's not what is going to get them the votes. Brad Sherman very well may get to ride into office again because he's been in office for 20 years. Maybe he is able to do that just because people keep voting him in, but a lot of these other representatives who actually need to win votes to stay in power or senators that need to uh, retain votes to stay in power, they're not going to put a lot of their focus into cryptocurrency because that is not what is going to get them re-elected. What's going to get them re-elected is talking about immigration or talking about uh, uh, anything. I mean, name a political issue that's big in the media and that's what's going to get them reelected guns i don't care whatever it is it's not cryptocurrency cryptocurrency is getting big but it's not to the point where all of the mainstream media is doing nothing but talking about it and both parties have taken a side so if something like this is going to happen it's going to happen years down the road it's going to happen five or ten years down the road when bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are a much larger industry and by then they're going to be too far along they're going to be too well developed to just simply ban it won't be possible it won't work it'll be like trying to ban marijuana and you guys know how that's going in the United States right now, everybody's lifting those bans. There's companies popping up all over the place. We have hemp coin and weed coin and all these other cryptocurrencies to back that up as well. It's not going to happen. He's not going to get support to ban Bitcoin. I would be willing to bet money on that. And by the way, I am because I live in America and I'm always buying Bitcoin. So I don't think this is going to happen. It's nothing to worry about. But to wrap the video up, let's indulge in a bit of alternate future. What happens if Bitcoin does get banned? Well, guys, we're going to be talking about worst case scenarios on Bitcoin for tomorrow's video unless something major happens in the next 24 hours on the chart or in the news. But let's go ahead and indulge in that. What happens if Bitcoin is actually banned by the United States government? Because for a long time, I've been saying Bitcoin seems like it's going to go on a bull run here in 2019. But if something major like Bitcoin ban uh, America banning Bitcoin were to happen, maybe that would be pushed off. Maybe that would be a little bit harder. So what would happen if Bitcoin is banned in America? Well, I'll be quite honest with you it's probably not going to change a whole lot for the Bitcoin market because what's going to happen if Bitcoin is banned is sure it's going to tank for a little while. Sure, it may extend the bear market, maybe even up to a year because Bitcoin is a very, or excuse me, America is a very major market for Bitcoin. But at the same time, what happens when someone bans something? Well, everybody all of a sudden knows what it is. And I mean, no one, if, there's a lot of people and I'm not one of them. I abhor drugs. I do not do drugs. But there are a lot of people that do like doing drugs specifically because they are illegal and it makes them feel good. And also the same thing at the same time, Bitcoin is a very important industry because of what it can do. We see what's going on in Venezuela. We see what's going on in China. We see that these industries are thriving in these countries despite the government not being a fan of them and despite the ramifications of you being found using Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as opposed to the native currencies. That is just not what is going to happen in America because so many people would continue using Bitcoin anyway. Bitcoin by its very nature is able to usurp government power because it's not anonymous, but it is hard to track on a mass scale. You can track individual transactions, but try setting up a government agency that's going to track millions of transactions every single day. It's not going to happen. It's not something that could be enforced. It would never actually be able to work. And if Bitcoin were banned in America, all of a sudden you have everybody who's even slightly on the libertarian side looking at the, looking at the government and saying, why did they just ban this? Let's go ahead and dive into this a little bit. Let's dig into this. Why do they ban Bitcoin? Oh, they ban Bitcoin because it threatens the government's hegemony. I'm going to go buy a ton of it illegally. And it's going to turn into one of the biggest black markets in the history of the world. Bitcoin cannot be stopped. Even if it was banned in America, there are many other countries that would not ban it and who would take advantage of it. And Bitcoin would actually continue to thrive. And another reason why I don't think Bitcoin is going to be banned is because if Bitcoin is banned in America... The United States government is skipping out on one of the biggest opportunities it's seen in a very long time. Even though Bitcoin does usurp and undermine the United States dollar, even though it does do that, Bitcoin at the same time is one of the biggest revolutions in technology and in business that we've seen in a very long time. And I think that if you go ahead and ban Bitcoin, then many other countries that are not necessarily allies and indeed probably enemies to America, such as Russia, China, uh, perhaps India, maybe India is not necessarily an enemy, but a lot of these other countries that are not exactly friends with America 
are going to take advantage of that. Maybe Pakistan, maybe Iran, they're going to take advantage of these uh, developments that are being used by cryptocurrency, being used by blockchain, and use them to bolster their own economy and use to bolster their own national defense because of all of the benefits that come along with Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and blockchain. If Bitcoin and blockchain and cryptocurrencies are banned in America, we are going to be missing out on a very major technological and defense-based benefit and uh, and uh, benefit that we could see the United States use to its own benefit. I'm missing a word there. Either way, guys, I don't think Bitcoin is going to get banned. If Bitcoin is banned in America, we'd be missing out on something major, and I think we would come to regret it. It's not going to happen. If it does, though, it would be very interesting. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit more in tomorrow's video, like I said, where we go over some of the worst case scenarios for Bitcoin. Anyway, guys, that's basically going to do it for today's video. Tell me what you think in the comment section down below about this career politician who loves to sit in his fancy chair in Congress and talk nonsense for 20 years because he keeps getting reelected by the wonderful people of California. I would love to hear your opinions on him in the comment section down below and what he says about Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets. To be quite honest, I think he is going to completely and utterly fail. But as I've always talked about, I've never really talked about this much on the channel, but pretty much ever since I've been in the cryptocurrency market, I've been in the market for almost two years now. It seems like a very short time, but it's gone very quickly. What I've always said is that Bitcoin is eventually going to become a political issue. Eventually, Congress and the American people are going to start debating it in the same way we debate other political issues. And this seems to be the first step in that direction. Eventually, the two parties, the Democrats and the Republicans, are going to start taking sides. And we don't really know yet which party is going to be pro-Bitcoin and which one is going to be anti-Bitcoin. But unfortunately, because of how divided America is right now, and really the rest of the world is too, eventually, I think one side is going to be pro-Bitcoin and one side is going to be anti-Bitcoin. I don't think it's going to be one side... or. I don't think it's going to be both sides are pro or both sides are anti-Bitcoin. Eventually, one of the sides is going to be pro or anti. And I think at this point, I've seen a couple of Democrats not liking Bitcoin. I've also seen a couple of Republicans not liking Bitcoin. But so far, that's not really been de de uh, determined yet. The table's still open, if you will, as to seeing which party is going to take which side. That's definitely a conversation for the future and one that I'd love to see in the comment section down below. Which party do you think is going to be pro-Bitcoin and which party do you think is going to be anti-Bitcoin moving on into the 2020s? Because I definitely think it's going to become a political issue as the next decade continues to march on and Bitcoin continues its development and uptrend on into the future. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for today's video. I do want to thank each and every single one of you for watching as always. And tell me what you think about Jeb actually on coffee now because I am absolutely loving it. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. I do want to thank each and every single one of you for watching as well again. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.